democratic voting and funding. Yeah, I just had a read of it. Great article. Yeah, I read most of it. Not all of it, but most of it. I'm going to have to, yeah. Okay, give me two seconds. Yeah, it's actually like a really, there's two sides to the article. I think it does quite a good way. I think it explains breaking down like quadratic voting, you know, payments, attention, all that stuff. I think it does it quite well. But on the other hand, it also goes quite technical in terms of like mathematical sort of equations and stuff, which can, I think, lose most people. I think I got pretty lost with the equations because I don't understand equations that well, not because it was badly written. But I think in terms of like the writing and the graphical representation of what quadratic is, I think it did actually a really good job of conveying that. I didn't want anyone else to thought. Yeah, I think it, they did a really good job of breaking it down in a lot of real like, life practical examples. Where hey, this really Sorry, can you hear me better now? Yeah, no, I was just saying it, it broke down all of these topics really like neatly. And like you both had it from perspective if you wanted to understand it from the math perspective or intuitively. And then they use these really like nice practical examples of how this could play out in the real world that I was like, this would better humanity, et cetera. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I don't know, do, I totally agree with what you said about Like I think it, it nailed a lot of that stuff. And I think to be fair, I think if I'd read that article, I don't know, six months ago, I probably wouldn't have understood any of it, but I do now. So maybe I'm coming from a place of a slightly higher base. And so when you're coming from a place of a slightly higher base, I'd be interested to know who people who are new to the community might have made of the article. I, I didn't get to read it. I, I had planned it for yesterday, but I had a, a small incident with a, with a car accident. Everyone's fine. Sorry to hear that, dude. Like I said, I'm glad everyone's fine. It's never good to have a car accident. Did you get to read it, Robin? If you're talking, dude, can't hear you. You are unmuted, just you. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, sorry about that. Yeah, I read about from roughly 60% of it, 60 to 70% of it, not everything. And I definitely skipped the, the equations part. I was, yeah, I read, it's, it's sort of a, I had read about quadratic voting and quadratic funding before in the last few months. So I agree with you at this point, I'm. I guess I could say this, I'm coming from a bit higher base than uh, where I was maybe six months ago. Yeah, I totally get that. Uh, hey, NFTA and uh, Damien, did you guys get to read the article? No, and I'm looking at where exactly it is posted because I totally missed it. Sorry, it's a really good primer for the uninitiated and also the recently initiated. It, it does quite a good job. You can avoid the equations if you want to. Although when they walk through the equations and they say, if your demand is V and your price is X and uh, like that, those bits actually work really well. It's when it's just like a hardcore equation, like algebraic type thing that gets a bit above my head, but that might hit someone like yourself and NFTA quite well, because you guys seem to be uh, taking this in the nicest way possible. Geeky, nerdy uh, brains. I, I, I have read it a long while ago. Has it been uh, online? Wait, we have it for two weeks posted, so maybe I had read it back then. Yeah, yeah. I remember the the examples with Alice and Bob and the apples. That's the one, yeah. So yeah, it's posted two weeks ago in the reading group and stuff. But uh, yeah, so like I said, I thought it was a really good article. I think it's really interesting. I, given that most people haven't read it, I think that's fine. I think what could be interesting to discuss is it, for those who did get a bit of a reading it, and we can widen this out to the group maybe, is this, Lenny, hey, actually you're there, did you get... Nah. Hey, it's not about Zen, so interested. Lenny's going to become a resident Zen monk. He's going to kick oh. Naved off his throne. <laughs> no, Naved, no. No, Wait, we're all going for the Zen what? title. Oh, I just missed this. Sorry? I, I, I was working on something else. I just heard, kick me off my throne. That's What's right. Wrong? Your Zen throne. Uh, no, I was never on that throne. I, I think I articulated clearly that I know of Zen, but I haven't really delved into it. So, yeah. That's what a Zen master would say. In terms of, yeah, what I was thinking is like, what would be the applications of quadratic funding within finance.vote? So obviously we've got the voting. 
terms of managing, I, I think it could be interesting in terms of managing contributor payments or managing community driven projects and then those projects being voted on by the community and funding being allocated. I don't know if you've, I don't know if you guys have seen Gitcoin or any other protocols that are using things like that. Not familiar with it. I haven't, I too, but I haven't noticed. I think like for that funding, like the way Gitcoin does it is that if, if you don't have a strong identity to root, not carry you know, how much you contributed, then it's very like open to like spammers. Like people can just you know create like a thousand bots and you have the same rooting advantages as someone who actually paid money. So that's like the only. Yeah, it seems weird to me. I think because we're coming from this place of NFT gated things, we have better protection against that sort of stuff. And it's, I suppose it's always weird when you don't see that. And what were you saying, NFT? Eh? I've seen it used at Popathon. I, they did, I think the first one, they did most of their submissions on GitHub. And then I know that I heard a lot about GitHub grants and voting and payment and stuff. So I know they're using it heavily over there, but I'm not familiar with setting it up and stuff. On one note, I did mention to Papathon that they should probably check out FVT for financial tools. <laughs> I was like, go over there. You guys should go see them. But it did seem for me... GitHub had a little bit of like a learning curve. I had a little bit of, as an artist, <laughs> some trouble using it for the first time. That's interesting because I, I know you're an artist, but I also think of you as like a data coder type person. I thank you. I, you didn't offend me earlier when you said I was nerdy. I think it's just I was on a deadline, so I didn't give the proper time to learn how to use it fully. So then I wanted to be able to know it better. I like to take things apart. I'm actually working on my ledger wallet right now. So <clears throat> when when I was uh, helping out with Edgeware, they were actually starting to use quadratic voting. And they had a they had a grant open for a governance fund or grant or something. And but I actually didn't join it because I the, the way I, I wanted to get involved in my goal was to get involved in a project that was earlier on in the in the development cycle and Edgeware was quite far ahead already. So that's when I decided not to continue involved, but they were actually at the time that was maybe when was that maybe six months ago. So I stopped collaborating with them at that time. And then that's why when I started looking for other projects and I, and I found uh, FET. So they didn't really, at the time they hadn't really implemented. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I'm curious, this is like a bit of an off piste question, but it's all linked. How far ahead would you say Edgeware is in their development compared to FET? Good point. Uh, good question. But it's it's quite a it's a very different project, yeah, or a very different initiative or project. They they are they are a chain. They are a chain in the sense in the broadest. They consider themselves a chain in the in in a broadest possible sense. It's not and and the way FET let's say defines itself from what I understand is actually its own. DAO suite. Yeah, so it's quite a different, it's a very different thing. I don't know in terms of tech, I don't know if, I don't know if I'd be able to, to give any in-depth analysis of how more advanced they are or how in terms of more uh, ahead in the, in the development process they are. But what I would say is that they are ahead at the time, they were already more advanced in terms of developing the community. I'd say they had, when I started reading about FET, and was, when I first heard about FET, I think it was during the last elections in London, if I'm not heard, if I'm not wrong. When was that? Does anyone remember when that was? That you're right. So we did the London vote, London.vote, which is the mayoral election in the UK. So we used influence.vote to set up a quadratic voting on the A, the issues of the election and B, the candidates of the election. Okay. When was that, man? Do you remember? June, July. Last year. So at, at that time, I was. That was the first time I heard of FET. I read about FET. I heard of the project because of some interactions I had with with Nick on Twitter. And at that time, Edgeware was quite. The, the community was quite active already. They had already a set of weekly events going on. They had their governance framework more or less the basic government framework more or less set. Yeah, I, I can say. That's more or less what I could say. At the, you know, in terms of the tech, I wouldn't be able to say, but they were they, they had a few tools they were using already, and they had been they had been developing the, the the project for about for roughly 
two years, if I'm not wrong, two or three years, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you for the insight. Appreciate it. It's always interesting to hear where other sure. projects are at. And uh, yeah, in terms of what we're doing here, so this, this, this type of quadratic funding, I'm not sure where it plays a part in what we're going to do. I, I think it will. I just, I'm not 100% sure how and where. The, obviously, we've got two forks of it already set up with markets.vote and influence.vote. But we're going to have proposal.vote as well, which will probably be quadratic as well as, and then like I said, there could be this whole piece around contributors and how do we figure out how we work more effectively with people and allow the community to drive the development of dApps and other needs within the ecosystem. So I think there's this really interesting opportunity. Here's, here's a random question for you all. If you look into the future, and I don't too far into the future, could you ever see yourself building something on top of the technology we're building here at FVT or a dApp? Or, or anything really i i guess I, i'll just go first yes i definitely see myself doing that if, if things move towards keep moving towards the you know the, the the current direction and successfully things let's say if the vision is realized then for sure yeah for sure nice I, i'm in the same boat like i, I definitely want to build something on the tech do you know what you'd rough, do you like what you're interested in building? Is it DAPs? Is it DAOs? Is it something else? So in general, what I, I come from communications, marketing, business development and project management. So what I, I guess in the next few years, what I'd be most interested in is connecting blockchain and crypto to other industries, to other sectors and other, basically adoption, drive adoption. This is what I would like to do. Basically, probably in the other direction, bring different industries or, or different either companies or communities into crypto and into transform help coming up with DAOs, maybe consulting. I'm not really, I don't have this hundred uh, percent clear in my mind yet, but this is what I'd like to do. Bridge crypto, probably through DAOs. I'm not sure, probably through DAOs to, to different sectors and industries. This is what I see myself doing. Yeah, cool. That, that's definitely there's going to be a huge need for that stuff in the future like you say it's hard to put it pen to paper on that um, there's a lot more things that need to be built things that don't exist yet that need to be imagined and built yeah exactly yeah yeah and that takes time uh, but, but as a first step I, I, it's a, it might be a bit early to say but I would be quite interested in, in getting some work done on, on initial DAOs at FET for sure. This, after this call, Ricardo, you and I should stay on because I want to have a chat to you actually about something and just get your feedback on an idea I had. But anybody else like ever thought about what they might do? Naved could set up his meditation DAO. Lenny, what are you thinking? The opportunity space for, for DAO is actually bigger than the opportunity space for application. And because if you think about it, there are more, probably more online communities than there are apps, you know, because every app is just a just made up of it, all these communities. So the opportunity space for DAOs can be much bigger. So yeah, I really, really like the, this DAO space, the inclusion of people and capital and like mission. So yeah, it's hopefully something in the DAO space. Like almost almost every organization that you can think of, everything from Toastmasters to music, like music studios to movie studios can be a DAO. And you can have decentralized funding and decentralized ownership and even like a distribution mechanic because of your DAO. I don't know if you guys have heard of, I think it's mad reality. So they're trying to build like a reality TV show, like a reality dating TV show that's like controlled by a DAO. So like all these spaces will soon be explored and they'll all be DAOs. That's just where my head is at. What was that called? Mad realities? Yeah, mad reality. They're making a dating show as a DAO. <laughs> is it like filmed in New York? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's going or, to be controlled by DAO. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. This show about The Bachelor. Is it The Bachelor? Yeah, something like The Bachelor. Yeah, there's also like Source DAO. So they're trying to like buy the Dewey Chronicles, like the unpublished manuscript that was supposed to be like this 15 hour long movie that never got made. But there's a manuscript and the whole DAO is just to like buy the manuscript and then try to like make, try to make a movie off the manuscript, distribute the movie rights to people who contribute to the DAO. So all these things, like a fractionalization of media, or the ownership of media. Really cool. That's very cool. Go ahead, Ricardo. Yeah, I, 
I think so. Yeah, yeah let's talk anytime. I'm, I'm, uh, in the next few days, I'm going to be relocating to the US for family reasons. But uh, anytime you want to have a chat, this idea of fractionalization, uh, I think it's going to be huge in the, one of the next things that are going to happen. Yeah. So together with DAOs, probably the boom of DAOs, maybe this year, maybe in media, I think media is going to be one of the first areas to media and entertainment in general. Yeah. But there's so much more that's going to come. <laughs> I think that's so and but on the other hand, it's awesome to see a lot of experimentation now. But Mike Nick already talked about this, or he's been talking about this uh, for a while. But uh, in one of the meetings that we had, he he actually mentioned this specifically. That one of the issues, one of the many issues that, that are going to have to be overcome is that there's no the legis regulation legislation is not in place. So whenever there's a problem, whatever kind of problem, it has to be solved within the community and within the space of the DAO and of crypto and this can cause other types of problems, yeah, because nothing can be enforced. No, there's no legal decision, and because it usually these things can involve very quickly can grow to involve a lot of money. It can get complicated, and it will go, get complicated the way I see it. Regulation is coming. And then, of course, there's discussions about know, pro-government, anti-government, pro-regulation, anti-regulation. But uh, mm, I think this is going to be one of the tricky areas from now on. As DAOs grow and, bo and bloom, this could get tricky. Yeah, definitely. Who knows where it goes, really? And uh, sky is the limit, but there's going to be these hurdles that we're going to have to figure out. We will figure out. It's inevitable, the game. I just don't know how that's going to happen or when. I don't think anybody does. But yeah, it's going to be all these. You've got Harry Barry Puta setting up his legal accounting DAO to, to go and audit DAOs and do stuff like that. So there's going to be people like you guys who cross over from the real world into DAO world. And, and go and do all these cool things that DAOs are going to need eventually. We just, either they know it and they just don't need it because there's no, no no one to catch up with them or they need it and it just doesn't exist yet. So um, up to you guys to create. Yeah. Yeah. I th my impression is that there's a, there's already quite a, like a relatively good number of people starting to work on these inter or inter interchanges or interfaces between existing legal system and DAOs and, and crypto, the, this is starting. Yeah. And there's a few kind of serious, really well-known people from traditional in the legal and um, other government related areas migrating the same way that people from traditional mar finance are migrating. People from traditional areas of government are migrating and in regulation. So I think it's going to happen. It's going to, it's going to, somehow it's going to happen. Can I ask a question here about the article? I was having a look now while this conversation was going on, and even with a quick glance, I can tell that it's a bit beyond my current understanding. It's a tough read. At a basic level, I can't explain yet why quadratic voting is better. And I'm looking at this the graph in it that says one dollar, one vote, quadratic voting, one person, one vote, about how much influence you purchase. And I'm not sure that I can interpret what each one means and which one is better or why. So that's a, the answer for your earlier question about a fresh view into the... Sure, okay. So I think the, the thing with quadratic voting is that it basically signals preferences. So rather than a binary yes, no, with no real understanding of preferences for the yes or no, if you've essentially got more than two options, quadratic voting allows people to signal preferences. Also. What it does as well, depending on the nature of the voting system you're moving from, is it, it instead of over compensating, over conferring too much privilege to those who either A, care a lot, or B, have a lot of voting power. So if you've got, let's say you got buy your votes, if you've got the most amount of money, you win. That's just how it works, if you, if you can just buy your votes. Or if you care the most, if you put the most amount of passion and work into something, for example, that person can get overcompensated as well, depending on the voting system we're talking about. Whereas quadratic voting, it filters both of those things out because of the N influence is N dollar. So one one vote is one dollar, two, do, two votes is two dollars, and then you, you basically scale upwards. So it's this flattening basically of influence at some point it will get too expensive to just buy the vote so when you're doing influence.vote for example and let's say you're going to put all your votes into one section you may have noticed you actually can't really do that 
you can only get to something like, I don't know, 18 or something, and then you've got to spread the last two around because you don't have enough voting power left to buy the next vote, which is going to cost you $19 instead of the first vote, which cost you $1. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I've done a few votes already and I, I saw how it works. It did make more sense to spread other things that I thought was interesting. So something as simple as picking your favorite, I could spread points on the other ones that I also like, but if I were to pick this one, they wouldn't have had any points. And, and the one person, one vote? How is the quadratic voting better than one person, one vote? I, I, okay, so quadratic voting is better than one person, one vote for a number of different reasons. And what you're, what you're looking at in quadratic voting, again, again, it's the same thing. It's signaling, right? So if you've got four options and you can only choose one option, then the ability to like filter the other two options in terms of your preference of two and three are greatly diminished, right? You're gonna start voting tactically versus actually voting for preferences. Matt, can I comment here? Please. Was it Raga, Rug, was, was you who asked in what way uh, quadratic voting is better, right? So I'm gonna, so put it in a different, I just wanna try to put it in a different way as Matt was explaining, just it might be, uh, and an easy way to understand. Suppose, for example, everyone has a certain, so there's a community, there's a project, there's a chain, a blockchain, and there's a community, and everyone has a certain amount of coins in this community. Some some people have one, some people have 100, some people have 20,000, some people have a couple million coins. Yeah? So if it's one coin, one vote, the person who has one coin can vote once. The person who has a million coins can vote a thousand or a million times if they want. So obviously, this person will have an advantage. Yeah. Because one vote, one vote costs one coin. Let's say one coin, one vote. In quadratic voting, the sec so the first person who had one coin is going to vote, and it costs one coin, one vote, one coin. The other person who has one million coins, the first vote for this person costs one coin. The second vote will cost maybe two. The third vote would coins would cost what four or eight? I'm not sure. And then so yes. as the person keeps voting, yeah, the votes become more expensive. So this. The person who has a million coins loses power. Yeah, so that's what uh, Matt was mentioning before. Is this, did it help in any way, what I just said? Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. It's just a, when it's one person, one vote, not one coin, one vote, then in a way it's now distributed. Everyone's got the same amount of power. And I think, Matt, what you're saying is that the quadratic voting will offer a more accurate result of what actually people want because you yes. get to spread you get to be you get to be nuanced in your voting you get to be you get to show preferences where it's just one person one vote you have to just vote tactically because your guy might not win or whatever that you've got there but if you know that then you have to vote in a way which you feel be the least most impactful or most impactful or whatever however you're using that vote so i think of like politics in the uk for example the same thing brexit 52%, 48%. I guarantee you, 52% of the people that voted for Brexit did not vote on the same thing. They were not voting for the same thing. Same for the 48 people that voted to remain. They were not voting for the same thing. They all had a different idea of what remain means, and they all had a different idea of what leave means in the context of Brexit. If they were voting quadratically, we would have had a far more nuanced idea about actually what people really think is this and this, not just this binary, one, one vote, one person. But what you're saying here is that you would need more options when you vote as well. Because if at the end you were just voting yes or no, you're not going to put distribute your points between yes and no. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. But, but I just want to mention here, there's a couple, quadratic voting does not solve some of the, some other issues that are typical. It comes from political science as well. Yes, yeah, for example, how do you handle collusion? Yeah, so you, people can still sell their votes if they want to. Yeah, so a group of people get together uh, and agree. Okay, we're going to do this together, and there's collusion behind it. And then a certain amount, a certain outcome is achieved with this collusion. Yeah, someone selling their votes to other people, so that as a result is achieved. So, quadratic voting doesn't really solve that. So no, my it point doesn't. is, it's it does. It's not perfect. It's not. It's still not. 
still not a perfect solution for voting using blockchain or crypto. I think, and you I also think... have to assume that everybody voting understands how quadratic voting actually works, which can be an assumption. I think we have to take that assumption in when we're talking about in this context. Uh, if someone's involved in a project that's doing quadratic voting or you're voting for your local mayor and it's a quadratic vote, you have to assume people know how to vote. And obviously, there should be education involved with that. But a part of this as well, like to your point, Hello. Ricardo. Hey, you there? Yes. Ricardo? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, to, to your point, Ricardo. I think you're right. I think NFTs actually goes quite um, a long way in terms of dealing with the collusion part, but you can't ever make a perfect voting system. I think that's why I've read. One of the things I picked up the most from Nick is you can't stop it. All you can do uh, is try to say. I have to say something about the matter that Dr. Ricardo mentioned about buying the votes. Yeah, please hear me. Ah, yeah. So you said what happens if like a bunch of people try to sell their votes towards a specific outcome. So this would imply that there would be one outcome for one party. And we know that with quadratic voting, for example, like we have it in finance vote, there are 100 votes. If you try to vote for one outcome, you have maximum nine or 10, uh, 10 votes that you can assign. So if you don't assign 10 votes to the similar outcome, you may assign seven votes to another outcome without great degradation. So what this means is that if someone tries to buy votes, he has to, to buy a lot of more votes. So it's actually, for example, if we have two parties, two political parties, and one party wants to buy votes, in order to buy 100 votes, he must buy out 10 people, right? Yeah. On the other hand, to have 100 votes without being bought, you can manage it with like 14 people, if they assign seven vote seats, does this make sense? So it needs like a lot of more of money because with quadratic voting, the thing is that things shouldn't be polarized. You don't do quadratic voting to vote between two political parties or between two outcomes. You have five or six options. So it's very difficult for one of them to buy out a huge amount of followers. It is possible, but it will need quadratically larger funding than it would be if there was one person, one vote. So it doesn't yeah. solve the problem 100%, but it makes it a, little, a lot more difficult to buy votes. Yes, I totally agree with you. You're completely right. And that's, I think that goes back to, to what Matt was saying. It's, so it's, it makes the, the playing field more even, more even. Uh, it distributes power much better. Quadratic, quadratic vote it distributes power a lot better than uh, one coin or vote or even uh, one person or vote no, one coin or one vote, which is which was which is I guess it's still the most common form of of uh, governance in in crypto. So yeah, you're right. I totally agree with you. It doesn't solve the problem, and I don't think I'm not sure if anything will solve fully solve voting at the dynamics. Any system will be able to, but yeah, I agree with you. It's a, an important step in that direction. But there are other things, yeah. So, for example, and uh, Vitalik mentioned this in the in several articles that he wrote about quadratic voting. For example, funding public goods, and especially retroactively. Uh, so, there's a couple things. There's, so that's why it's interesting. That's why it's an interesting topic because it touches on several different things in crypto. And also, FET allows negative voting too, right? And that's something else you have to consider. Not only are you upvoting things, but you could be downvoting things also. Yeah, again, nuance. We, we tried to give as much yeah, nuance true, as possible. True. And whose opinions? No? I yeah. have comments about quadratic voting. The way it works is the number of votes, the credit cost for the vote is the square of that value. So one is one, two is four, three is nine, four is 16, five is 25. So it adds up in a heck of a hurry. So even if you've got a million credits to vote with, you get a thousand voting points total if you want to throw it all into one. Now, if you want to get special and spread them out, you can really spread that out and get more than a thousand votes. So quadratic voting can get really interesting really quick. So is for what you're talking about of getting multiple votes, is that sort of, so if somebody wanted to manipulate the system and wanted to get... 2 million here, 2 million there. And we've talked about how the cost of the token may go up and, and that's exponential. But so 
is it that it would be very difficult to some degree to make a lot of effort and planning to be able to manipulate the vote in a way that I guess pulls the wool over all the people that are also voting? Is that sort of what I'm hearing? Yeah. It would be very obvious that one person has done something extremely out of whack, right? Being able to pull a thousand votes into something onto a single vote in something. That, yeah, that's obviously crazy. Well put, though. Good description. And, and Gene, you said you're having some problems with your push to talk. Have you fixed that? If you haven't, you go down to your settings in the bottom left hand corner. You'll see your username. There's like a cog. Click on the cog. That'll take you to audio visual setting or to your settings. You click audio visual, you select the push to talk key and away you go. And if yeah, I saw in your general chat, you have read the article. Yes, I did. I read it last week. Yeah, I am a math nerd. You are correct there. Uh, you had asked earlier about uses for quadratic voting and tools. And I think one of the biggest ones, big, biggest, big, is uh, healthcare. You could use FVT for healthcare, for voting, for benefits, for all that. It's, I guess the question should be, what can't we use FVT voting finance tools for? So is that like upstream or downstream? Who's voting on what in that instance? Everything. Because if you started from the beginning, if you're developing, let's say, a healthcare DAO, we need to vote on the benefits, we need to vote on so much. And I think healthcare is one of the spaces in the world, and it's one of my specialties. That's why I can I talk about it. But healthcare is one that's like ready to be changed, very much ready to be changed and implemented in blockchain. So I guess part of the, for U.S. healthcare, let me speak of U.S. healthcare, it's waiting. For it. We need that type of disruption. I just don't know when it's going to happen with all this, but it'll be really powerful when the people that are being served are able to use their voice to choose their benefits and actually choose what matters to them. At the moment, some plans don't cover mental health benefits. So that's the thing. If it goes to like single payer, <laughs> that's another big uh, tab, but. I think it could work with the tools that we are starting to develop. I really do. So, and FTA, I just want to comment. On, so it's it's very so what you're saying is very interesting for me. I have, I'm dealing with this right now. There's a family, uh, there's a relative who's going through the some rough times in using the U.S. health system. So I'm curious to hear or to read a bit more. If you have any references or or links links to to anything related to this, I'll be very interested in reading more about it. Yeah, if you want to DM me this particular sort of particular topic, I can give you a, a better answer than just healthcare articles because healthcare is a mess <laughs> everywhere in the world as because we're humans and we need to survive. Yes. But the the U.S. healthcare, I'm semi familiar with because I work in and not doxing, but I work in a larger uh, healthcare company in the U.S. So mm -hmm. I know, I'd say half the rules maybe 75% of the rules. <laughs> so awesome. I can, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I'll, it's, I'll drop, you, drop you a note then. Yeah. Of course, yeah, please. Um, sure. I see it. I see our healthcare system now potentially look, it looks like to me, uh, I've said this before, I think the big players to some degree are starting to implement ledger blockchain type processes into our everyday work and i wonder wow. if in the next five years is it seems it and, and this could just be that i'm obsessed with my hobby and my passion in crypto and all that but <laughs> it seems like to use the blockchain to some degree it's oversimplified tech sort of because it's block after block and when you think about all the hard stuff that i don't know about but i <laughs> uh block after block it seems like in order to engage with the blockchain and the ledger, the tech processes of big companies need to be synthesized to work with that. And that's what I feel is happening or I see is happening in some of these things. And and I think they could be implemented onto a global or national, all that type of like single payer type thing. It's interesting to see them stripping down the process towards automation. That's what I was getting at, towards automation. Oh, that's... It's very interesting. I, I'll drop you a note and then I'd, I'd really like to read a bit more about this or talk about more. Yeah, I'd love to send Thanks. you stuff. I've been in it for 10 years, so I'm, it's part of my nerdiness. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else, too, if you have a U.S. healthcare questions, I can't solve them all, but I might be able to point you in the right direction. That's very cool of you. Yeah, Thank you. you.
Sorry, thanks, Wayne. Um, yeah, I, I echo that sentiment you mentioned about uh, needing uh, to support uh, mental health care going forward because that's critical. I did have something to bring up about the, with respect to the, I guess, onboarding the healthcare system in the blockchain process. I remember reading about a study that was done in, I believe, Austin last year, the year before, trying to support unhoused or housing disadvantaged uh, populations in, the, in that area. And they found specifically that the bottleneck wasn't so much the uh, availability of the technology or the willingness of the people they were trying to assist, but really the technology training aspect of the actual employees of, of the actual healthcare workers that it was really difficult for them to be like tasked with learning this whole new system. And I, I would hope that like you were indicating that automation would be part of the key to that changing part one. I guess we'll try to uh, wait and see. Yeah, I hope it is. I see what I see in my day is that there is software that they made, and this is again US, that they pushed on US healthcare across the board. And, and I don't know anything about like why they did that. If it's let's, I'm just throwing out names here. I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg was like, hey, everyone in the US use this healthcare system and that's why they did it. But I did see that they, switched hospitals to this and I guess my thought on that is is the intention to move closer to that blockchain reality so did they start them using this is the tool that they're using a tool meant to direct people into the next phase or are we is the healthcare system training people into another app that's potentially maybe not are they I'm sorry I'm you know this is all coming out as I are they investing into the old system or are they investing into the new system? I feel like they have feet in both both graves, both buckets, and they're working on that. But I do, I feel a lot of people make a lot of money on healthcare, and a lot of people are trying to make it seem more, more difficult than it is. But it's at the moment, it's about money and power and influence and everything that uh, we're working to stop all the bad. And then we get to the crux of the question. Yeah. So, yeah. Because this is, That's this is the actual, uh, the way I see it, this is the actual challenge of implementing any kind of decentralization change in traditional industries. It's about shifting the center of, of the balance of power where the money lies. Yeah, so this is the complicated part. And this is why quadratic yeah. voting is beautiful. Okay, so with respect to that and what Damien was saying, I just, I had mentioned something in the, uh, I guess the general chat, I can't really remember where I said it, but I voted around five or six hours ago and looked at the results. And is there any mechanism that didn't seem like, but is there any mechanism that I'm not aware of as to prevent somebody from owning, say, a, a dozen identities and uh, voting similarly across all of them? Because it seemed like that was what was happening. Yeah. So there is this, like, we do have a mechanism for it. I suppose there's two factors at play. So the first factor at play is that the ID price is at its lowest cost right now, 100 FVT. Um, it's gone up as high as 50,000 FVT before in the past. So the price of the ID is not flat. We use an auction mechanism to sell the IDs. And how the auction mechanism works is that every single time someone buys an ID, the price of the ID doubles. So if you buy one for 100 and I look, the price of the next one is 200. Now what happens each block that passes, the, the price um, goes down. Now it goes down, I can't remember the exact amount, it goes down per block, it's 10 FVT or something per block. So again, it will reach 100 again at some point, and then until someone buys another one, then the price will go up again. So when, so for example, right now, the distribution of our IDs isn't, so we're working on, on solutions to fix that, so we can improve the distribution of the IDs as it stands. But a lot of people who have been with the project since the very beginning, they have just bought an ID a month or whatever, um, because they like them, because the initial ones had lots of beautiful artwork on them, really amazing artwork that all were unique. And uh, there's no other versions of it in anywhere. They're just these uh, NFTs were completely unique. So some people just collect them for the artwork. Um, and that meant a number of people have collected a set of IDs and obviously used those IDs to vote with. Now, one thing we did do on this vote is we actually did what's called aggregated NFT vote. So first of all, it's NFT gated. And then second of all, it's aggregated in terms of rather than having to do, rather than having 10 IDs vote for 10 different things, if you're saying one person with 10 IDs, you could be one person with 10 IDs, you'd vote once and that would 
calculate for all of your IDs, so you wouldn't, if that makes sense. So there's that mechanism in place in terms of the civil protection. Now, the avocado and I alluded to is there is no perfect voting system. It doesn't matter if you use blockchain or if you use, I don't know, whatever. There is no perfect, perfect voting system. It can always be attacked and, and people will always try to civil it. Now, we are working on better ways to protect from civils and we've, we've, we've got halfway there with the NFTs and the, and the, uh, the pricing mechanism for auction. So once we have nailed that down a bit further, we'll be even closer to having something which will be even better for democracy. So it's a challenge. It's one that we're, you know, we're really aware of and we are working to fix. But the, I'll say it again, there is no perfect solution to this because people are always going to be really imaginative and inventive as to how they attack a voting system. Like, and, and that's yeah, just my only hope is to yeah, just continue to try to iterate on whatever we've... Yeah, that's it. We are working on Influence 2.0. Um, so that's going to be the next iteration of that. And we're pretty much working on the next iteration of every dApp. Influence, markets, yield. Yeah, bank is the newest, the mint are the newest. They don't need iteration right now, but they will do eventually. But the other main dApps we are working actively on and there'll be some updates for the community actually on influence.vote soon, which will be really good. So you guys can see what we've been doing on that. But in terms of the NFT stuff, yeah, we are actively working on how to manage distribution of IDs better and uh, distribution of power. But thanks for the comment though. How did you come across us? I noticed Dr. Nick with the, the thread on Twitter and followed it and listened to the uh, lecture he gave a few weeks ago now, considering a kind of a graduate program. Uh, yeah, awesome. Cool. If you've got an ID, you should go through the ID gate. The, there's a channel for NFTs and you'll get access to the ID holders chat and it'll give you, and over time, more benefits will come to those who hold ID. We've got quite big plans for the, what we call citizens, who are the ID holders and how we can make sure you guys get the most bang for your buck from your IDs. Right, thanks. Yeah, I just want to be able to help out. So. Not worried about for buck. Yeah. Oh, what I mean by bang for buck in terms of a value from the community and from the DAO, we really value our ID holders highly and we want to make sure that you guys are, you get to learn the th things first about the DAO before other people do basically. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. Cool. Anybody else got anything they want to add? Uh, Matt, I uh, just want to thank, I, I, I'm going to have to jump, I have to, I'm flying tomorrow to the US, so I have to get a COVID test. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So thanks a lot for, it was really nice, really good discussion. Hope to join the next ones as well. Thanks everyone. No worries. If you're not available now, Ricardo, we can speak later or whatever. Just let me know. Cool. So starting from tomorrow, end of the day, it should be, should be all right. should be available. Cool. Or, or probably two days. Give me two days and I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah, just do that. All right, I'll wait to hear from you. All right. Cheers then. Thanks, man. And yeah. Have a good one. If anybody else has anything I want to add, we can, we can wrap it up here. Thanks, guys. See you later. Cool. Let's wrap it up here if, um, and, and see you guys soon. Thank you. Oh, Good night, everybody. Just quickly, before we do wrap it up, remember that today is the last day for A, voting on bank.vote governance distributions. So if you haven't done that, get it done. Number two, the submissions for the imagined DAOs. We're going to close that either tonight or tomorrow morning or something, but get it in tonight because I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to have to close it and I have to correlate them. And that's not a massive job, but it's a time job. It'll be great if you guys can get that done. If you haven't so, submitted already. Healthcare.dow. Healthcare.dow. Right. Yeah. I need help, but healthcare.dow, I need some help. We can do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll submit it on Airtable. Yeah, get it submitted. Definitely do it. We can airdrop yeah, everybody that's got health that, insurance in the UK tokens. How does that work? Yeah, I know enough that we could probably build a healthcare system from the ground up. Potentially, there's a bit we might be able to do it. <laughs> I'd be curious to see how we'd get providers, because uh, well, we... I can be your provider in Greece if you're interested. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. <laughs> like yeah, it's it's it, it, it. It's a big undertaking, but it, honestly, providers is just getting money. It's all about money. People sometimes will say to me, I know we're wrapping up, but I, I love talking to you guys. Um, people will say to me sometimes, if your health insurance company, the one I work for, they'll say, bad insurance, you have terrible insurance. And every time I get to say, no, 
whoever employs you, whoever chose your insurance benefits, they chose cheap benefits for you. Because I know that all of these healthcare companies have crazy benefits, some really great ones. Some, it doesn't even matter what it is, it'll be covered because you're under this plan. And then we have the same, same, same company not paying for when we talk about mental health benefits, not paying for autism benefits, because the company that solicited the healthcare benefits didn't pay for it. So the ability of these companies, these healthcare companies, to do great, wonderful, marvelous things is there. They're just choosing not to because, and again, this is a little dirty blow here, but the CEO of my company makes like $44 million a year. That's not much. And that's- Chicken feed. No, no. Yeah, chicken feed. I'm after a decade in it, you start wanting to help everyone. And then after a decade, you think, oh, you guys are not helping anyone. You guys are bad. We have to do something about this. So here's my idea for you. And this is what I've always, I've, I've been thinking about this whole healthcare thing, not from much from your perspective, but actually from like a Web3 perspective. So people who work for DAOs and work in Web3 and crypto are pretty much like persona non grata, right? We don't, it's not really easy for us to fit into any system. Like you can't get health, you can't buy business insurance, you can't get health insurance, you can't do those things. I think it could be really interesting to make a DAO that provided people the ability to buy healthcare through the DAO. So that it would be NFT gated, you'd buy health insurance, that NFT was a representative of your health insurance. You'd renew that maybe yearly or monthly. I don't know how that would work, the exact mechanics of it. But you then, as a group, have that collective bargaining power to be able to go and go, okay, we want providers that can do X, Y, and Z, and this is how much you'll pay. Do you know what I mean? So you've, it's like yep. a reverse, almost. Yeah, we're out of network for all of them. Again, my specialty is US, but you're right. I'm thankful that this year, um, I'm hoping to maybe move into more Web3 work. I really am. And my, my wife was able to take me on her insurance. She's planning to stay in, I guess, what we'd call the traditional roles right now. So I can be on her health insurance. But I think about that too, is what are all these people that are, what are all, like, I know it's a smaller population now that we don't have everyone in web three, but what are we going to do? So this is, I definitely think finance tools can start building that now. I do. I it's exciting. I'm, I'm taking a bit uh, longer than I should, but we could start by forming a very basic healthcare service and see how this works instead of trying to build up directly to a full healthcare coverage, like a small telemedicine coverage, like a small health coaching service that can be very cheap and can provide a little bit of help and see how this works through a DAO and uh, through Web3. I think yeah. that makes sense. That's like your MVP, right? You just so dog food it a little, get a couple of basic providers, get people involved. Yeah. Yeah. Use telemedicine and probably in the future, Mayo Clinic uh, did a business model where he employed the uh, physicians online. And uh, regionally on each country had a, a small office with a nurse that provided the rest of the healthcare, which can be way cheaper than trying to have a full coverage with a hospital just saying probably something very cheap and small and then build up towards something uh fuller yes of course because you wouldn't want everyone to depend on it right away as we're building it but it really the biggest thing that i see is access it's almost mm -hmm. my medical card my insurance card is my nft my gated access to these doctors and it is silly to think that we have all these millions of practitioners of health that are certified and able to help people, but the access is gated off by the insurance company. Even the telehealth, I think just because hey, of hey, COVID, hey. they were, they were uh, uh, yeah. uh, forced to change the telehealth to some degree, I think. They were forced to allow patients that accessibility. And it, it's frustrating to know that, yeah, they could have been doing telehealth five years ago, but they chose not to because it honestly doesn't make them any money if they make it easier for us to be healthy. To some degree, they're pushing it on uh, wellness. They push that, get your um, checkup and do this. But really, I do think the tools are there for all of the, for global, let's say global healthcare, potentially, <laughs> potentially like the NFT that, uh, and that was saying about it's there it's the accessibility it's potentially to getting doctors involved because you don't want anyone to lose certification once we get money power of what type of governments are going to say oh if you enact uh, transactions with this web3 base 
you could lose a license or something. I don't know. I know that the power and the money and all that's in it is a, it's a sad game, I guess. It is a sad game and that will happen, right? Like you have to expect that as an attack vector. There's going to be yeah. moral outrage. How dare you, do you, how dare you have an idea? God damn you and your ideas. And it, it, like it will just come with planning. But I think before you even get to that point, we're going to see most of these attack vectors used against other DAOs like Wyoming DAO, the Citizens DAO thingy, us, all the other big guys. We're going to see these attack vectors opened up. So you're going to learn gas out. You're going to learn about what's going to happen, I think. In the, over the next year, over the next two years, we'll learn a lot. And they'll use all their powder, of course, because that's what moral outrage does. It gets really angry, but it exhausts itself really quickly. So I think, but I think it's a really good idea, actually. I really, I think health now for Web3 professionals. That's cool. I'll, I'll submit it to Airtable. I appreciate this discussion because sometimes when it comes to writing, I don't, uh, get my thoughts out as, as quickly and, and fluidly. So thank you for accepting this discussion as part of my submission. Yeah, I, are you familiar with the... Uh, is it the cotton... Not the cotton gin. Johannes Gutenberg, the printing press. Are you familiar with that story? From what we were taught in school is that uh, he went over to the U.S. or where he went. It might have been France. It might have been more brilliant people than the U.S. And he saw the printing press and he remembered all the pieces. And then he, when he got home, he, he built it with the pieces. So I guess... The point of this is telling you that I am aware of most of the pieces for healthcare. I'm, I know what they are, and I know what they're currently using in the traditional org, and we can hopefully use that to build something better. With the sentiment like that, and you're, you're standing on the right side of the ethical you know, question, it's going to be hard to attack that with moral outrage for very long. Yeah, they will, though. And, and definitely something um, we'll definitely see is when it comes to the sociological questions of welfare coverage, who do you cover that maybe can't afford it? That's, we don't have to deal with those problems now, but that's a big problem in the future. And I know, I think I've seen Kazenia or maybe Maria talk about it, about a healthy population doesn't need to worry about the people that we're taking care of on the site because a healthy population can help. I think I'm relaying this thought right is that a healthy population can manage things that maybe can't contribute but can, in different ways can contribute yeah that's right there's always a percentage of the population who can't contribute whether they're elderly or children or otherwise unavailable to contribute there, there's generally mechanisms in place that catch those people because the base assumption is most people do want to do something with their time and energy and effort most people don't choose to like dodge the system some people do and that's fine, you have to expect that as well. That's just an acceptable thing. But I think this whole perception around people trying to dodge a system and not trying to help other people is, I, I, I think a lot of it is just politicking. It's just a lot of people telling stories to get people upset. Most mm -hmm. of it just is not true. I think that, and, and because, most, because most politicking is telling stories to get people upset, people then feel attacked. So when, like, I can talk about the UK quickly here, like, you look at the political spectrum and everyone's I, I need to protect mine because this guy's gonna come over the, the water, is gonna take my job and it's gonna take my wife and it's gonna take my daughter. So I need to protect mine. So therefore I'm against all of this. And that's like this whole, that's like this, that's moral outrage, but a different beat. And that's just not true. That's just a story they've been told. And I think, you know, we with what you're talking about, I think actually looking after an entire population isn't actually that difficult. It just makes for good politics to, to, to divide and conquer. And we can just be apolitical. That's the that's the game, I think. That idea yeah. of people not contributing is, you know, normally phrases like the free rider problem, but I think it's, it's appropriate to call it a free rider fallacy. It's just rubbish, though. It's just such a small, tiny percentage of the population that don't want to do anything. And that you have to expect that those people do exist is fine. But, mm. And it's doubt and pessimism too. Sorry, it's doubt and pessimism. Like you said, it's the politicking to say that these people don't want to work. They're just, especially with the, the beauty of a DAO and even my experience coming to this group is that if somebody wants to do something, they'll show up and the friendly people that we have waiting in the MetaSherpa will help find them something that they can do. Like my mother doesn't work right now. She's pretty young for, she's not retirement age, more personal information for everyone. But I see the fact that she she wants to be part of the world, right? So that's the beauty of Web3 too. So she wants to be part of the world and maybe she can't financially, maybe she can't buy in, she can't. And she is a little bit 
I'd say too old for her knowledge and her life experience to take on learning Web3. But I see her as an example of like somebody, even myself, can come to a DAO and say, I'd like to help and, and be able to be directed with things that suit the need for that person. And I think that's a really cool thing. It's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah, we're in the future. Yeah, just to build on top of that, the, the other great thing about DAOs is you can fire yourself too, like I did. Oh, I signed up to do this and I'm just not getting it done and I don't want to do it, but I don't feel bad about that because I can do something else for the DAO. That was funny. Yeah. You can fire yourself. No one can fire, you can fire yourself. I'm just missing out on anything. I'm just realizing this isn't for me. I'll go do something I enjoy instead. Which is great. The best part of it. That's part of the reason why we're organizing by the task board as well. I'll, I'll, I'll finish on this. Is that, um, so we want people to be able to take on basic tasks. We want anybody to be able to take on a basic task, right? It doesn't matter what domain it's in. As long as you're willing to like figure out how to do that thing, it shouldn't be too much of a learning curve. And then through you figuring out which basic tasks you're interested in, oh, actually, I thought I'd like the, the, the transcription work, but it turns out actually I prefer graphic design. I didn't realize that, but now I know this. I'm going to double down in this area and I'm going to go and then take on some intermediate tasks and some advanced tasks and really build my skills out, build my confidence, build my knowledge. And that's why we've organized it like that, because it, to me, it just felt to be having worked in recruitment for so long and seeing people blocked by the inability to move sideways into other industries and do other things it was always like oh you've got skills here so that's it for you and i hope with that task board and what we're trying to build there is going to give people the ability to be able to move sideways as well as moving up at the same time and not feeling like they're losing traction within their work or the experience and stuff so that's the thinking around that sorry jean go ahead and Oh, no, it's at you. I was going to say, I, I like the task board. I've used it. I am still getting my hands around like table. I got to like just go in and use it. I have to dedicate that one hour of time to, to learn it because I see all these things. I think, oh, I can do those. <laughs> and I just haven't. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know how to do those. I can. Because you'll learn more about DAO technologies, finance.vote, all that good stuff. So, Jean, you were saying? Uh, just in asking about the if that was the correct item the available tasks at the bottom of the channels but it looks like that's done the method tasks the method task is there any uh direction as to what's being done and they're all available because the, the basically the, the majority of the tasks that we have are what we call there's three different types of task so there's traditional which is many applicants, one hire. There's contest, which is many applicants, and then the best work kind of wins, or best numbers of work, depending on how many people we've got looking at. And then there's cooperative, which is many people apply, many people work, many people win, and you all kind of work together to achieve the tasks. Most of the tasks on the board at the moment are cooperative, so anybody can apply to them and get going on them. There's beginner, intermediate, advanced. Beginner, anyone can do, intermediate, ideally someone with a frame of experience because maybe the skills to be able to do that in say Photoshop or something or in Adobe InDesign might just be too hard to learn and then try to do the piece of work. You're better off taking a sort of beginner level task that should, after a few of those, should get you up to speed to get you to intermediate. And then advanced, there's someone who's got a bit more of a kind of a portfolio per se, some real skills and experience in doing the work. Yeah. Well, thank you, appreciate that very much. Thank you everyone. Thanks, Matt. Cheers, Lenny. Cheers, everyone. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, Twitter Spaces and Nat and the Vets Meditation Time. Thanks, mate. Speak to you soon. Cheers, Fabs. Thanks. That's all. See you, Damien. Thanks. NFTA, Lorik. Oh, Appreciate sorry, Matt. Quickly, I just yes, saw on my calendar, there is something about the uh, something else today. It's a vote. The vote's closing. Oh, is it just a closing vote? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to start putting reminders in the calendar for any closing votes and stuff so people can Good see idea. those. Good idea. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. See you guys later. Cheers, mate. Ask real quick, is there a, a calendar that I can integrate? Yes. The link should be up in the... Or let me find exactly which channel in two secs. Yep. If you get up to start here... Is the info and go up to the start here channel it's like the traffic lights is the icon if you go to the first message it should be from hello i'm chris and there's a link 
The first link is the easiest way to stay up to date with the DAS program is to sub to the calendar here. I've just put the link in the general chat for you. That will add to whatever calendar you're using. Thanks for that. I'm going to use it too. <laughs> yeah, please. It's the easiest way to stay on top of everything that's going on. I'm not the best at schedules, but once I get on the schedule with you guys, I'll show up all the time. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah. Always lucky being here. Thanks. Thanks again. I like being here, so I appreciate it. It is interesting that I've encountered a lot of mats in this field, because that is my dad's name. So every time I speak, and he's a tech guy, so every time I talk to someone, I'm like, oh, your name's Matt? I'm like, are you my dad? Did you build Web3? Yeah. I feel like you might have. <laughs> Flipping Christian names. Like, we're, we're yeah, everywhere. Chris yeah, Chris, <laughs> Matt, Joseph, bloody John, John Daniel, mm -hmm. lots of Lukes. <laughs> Or everywhere. Joshua is another good one. Lots of Joshua's in the world. Cool. I'll let you guys go and I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Cheers. Bye.